The vote to leave the European Union by the United Kingdom a few years ago was an historic rejection of the socialism experiment that swept the world for the last decade or so. But it took the recent British election and subsequent wipeout of Jeremy Corbyn's Labour Party to confirm this correction. Today I want to revisit the lunacy of the European Union from two perspectives. One totally absurd, but one that's deadly serious. But just before I do, as an interesting aside, the AJA was told directly by someone very close to the British election, that would be Nigel Farage, that Jeremy Corbyn was well known for his comfort in and around the European Union. No doubt hatred of Israel was one of the common, common threads. Mauritania is a small country on the northwest coast of Africa with a population of only four and a half million people. But we learned a couple of months ago that the EU has gifted Mauritania 250 camels. Yes, you heard that correctly, as part of its efforts to combat the threat of jihadists and to boost border security. You might have thought that some high-tech surveillance equipment would be more beneficial, but no, that's what they got. The camels were donated as part of a $14.7 million worth of aid from the EU to boost Mauritania's development and security at the same time. Hmm, this is the EU at work. The same EU that says, quote, Israeli settlements on Palestinian territory are illegal, under international law, and have eroded prospects for a lasting peace in the region. That's the nasty bit. Only it's not correct, and I will explain why. For Israel building in Judea and Samaria to be illegal, the land would have to belong to someone else, that is, the Palestinian Arabs. But it doesn't, and never has. Before Israel took control of it in 1967, it was under Jordanian rule, who, by the way, did illegally seize it from the British and then occupy it in 1948. The British won it from the Ottoman Turks in World War I, who had controlled it for around 500 years. And before that, it was the Mamluks. And before that, well, it doesn't matter because there, there has never been a Palestinian Arab state there or anywhere else for that matter. The truth is that the land known as Judea and Samaria is technically ownerless. And this is the source of the controversy. But if anyone has a right to it, then it has to be the Jewish nation, by virtue of the biblical history, as well as archaeological evidence, that has proven a continuous Jewish existence there for thousands of years. But that doesn't fit the Arab narrative of an, indig of an indigenous population which was displaced by the marauding, colonising Israelis during the independence war of 1948. If we seek the truth, as we should, then examination of the facts is always a good place to start. Had the Jordanians never entered the Six-Day War, Israel would have left them alone, and Judea and Samaria would never have become part of the battles. However, the Jordanians joined their Arab brethren in the campaign to eradicate Israel from the Middle East map, but they lost. And that's the way wars have traditionally worked. If you launched a war against a neighbouring country and got defeated, there were consequences, usually in the form of territory being lost. But this changed in 1967, and probably for the first time in history, because when Israel won the Six-Day War, it immediately offered to return all the territory gained in return for a genuine peace. But we all know what happened. The Palestinian Arabs wouldn't have a bar of it. And to this day, despite receiving several offers of basically everything that they claim to want, continue to dream of eradicating the Jewish state from the landscape. But there is a bigger problem. The conflict is actually unsolvable for a very simple reason. And that is, the Islamic concept that once land has been under Muslim control, it must forever remain so. The fact that these lands are now under Jewish sovereignty remains a huge offence to the Muslim world. This, in turn, very easily justifies the notion of perpetual jihad against Israel 
as well as Jews who support Israel. But don't try to convince the European Union of any of this. It has been relentless in regurgitating the Arab lie for decades. Federica Mogherini, their anti-Semitic representative for foreign affairs, who finished up just last month, has repeatedly endorsed the lie that Israel is illegally occupying Palestinian lands. Her replacement is Joseph Borrell, a Spanish politician and mathematics professor who actually spent time on a kibbutz in 1969 where he met his wife-to-be. It is too early to know how he will run the portfolio, but if it is anything like his predecessor, Israel will continue to get a rough time from the EU. President Trump's administration has taken the lead on this and declared that Judea and Samaria are not illegal under international law. It would be good if Australia and other civilised countries did the same. This is Alan Friedman for the Australian Jewish Association.